Hello, everybody. My name is Eden with the Great Valley Museum, located at the Modesto Junior College. Welcome to Astronomy with Fred. Fred, what are we going to talk about today? Well, I thought we'd talk about the eclipses that occur and throughout the year and also about the uh, phases of the moon and a little bit about the craters, how craters are formed on the moon. Fred, you mentioned eclipses. I know there are solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. How do they both work? Well, let me show you. Let's switch places. Okay, right here I set up a model to explain visually how the eclipse is set up. I have the sun, the moon, and the earth right here. Those three are the components, the players of the eclipse. This, of course, is going to be our light source representing the sun, but this is the sun model right here. Okay, in order for a solar eclipse to occur, you have to have the sun and the moon positioned right about there and the earth right there, the perfect in line. Now, for a lunar eclipse, the moon has to be on the shadow side of the earth. So you have the sun, the earth, and the moon. This part of the orbit and this part over here, these are the lunar nodes. These are the ones that are uh, within the ecliptic plane. That's the position the moon has to be in order for the eclipses to occur. For example, this would be the lunar eclipse. If uh, the moon is over in this position at this lunar node here, this would be a solar eclipse. All right, here's a different way you can look at the, the eclipse, as if you're looking from Earth to the actual moon. Here we have the sun, we have the moon. You can see the shadow on the left side of the moon, and then you have the Earth over here. And you just move this back and forth so you can see the different phases of the actual eclipse. So right now, the, the moon's in the total solar eclipse position. And if I move it here, you can see a partial eclipse. When I move it to the left, you can see it. Okay, you have partials, you have uh, total eclipses. Now this is called an annular solar eclipse. You'll note there's a ring around there, that's the sun, and it actually only occurs on the farther orbit of the moon from the Earth. As a matter of fact, do we have an annular uh, solar eclipse coming up in Canada uh, in June of this year, 2021? The big one for the United States will be actually 2023, and that will be in October. Fred, I know there's a lunar eclipse coming up on May 26th, and I hear something about a reddish moon? Yes, on May 26th, we do have a lunar eclipse coming up. Here's what it looks like. Here's the setup. We have right here the sun, we have the earth, and we have the moon. These three bodies have to be in line in order for the lunar eclipse to occur. Here's the moon before the eclipse. As the moon orbits the Earth, you'll start to see the shadow taking over the lunar surface to eventually where it's completely in a shadow and you have a reddish glow that is seen from the Earth. As soon as it goes out of that, the reddish color disappears, partial eclipse, and the eclipse is over. All right, let's pretend we're on the moon. We're looking at the Earth during a total lunar eclipse. If you notice the atmosphere around the Earth, you'll notice it turns a kind of a reddish color. What we're noticing there is the refraction of the light from the sunlight is refracted, is bending as it comes towards the moon, giving it a reddish glow. This is the same thing that you see in sunsets and sunrises caused by this refraction. All right, so right now you're looking at two different types of shadows. You have a light shadow and a dark shadow. Uh, the light shadow is called the penumbra. The dark one's called the umbra. As the moon moves into an eclipse, you'll notice the different shades there. And as it gets towards the center where the darkest shadow, that's when you have that red, reddish glow from the moon, from the refraction from the atmosphere of our planet. 
Thank you, Fred. That was a lot of great information on solar and lunar eclipses. How come we don't see eclipses more often? That's a really good question, and hopefully this will explain why we do not have more eclipses. First of all, the orbit of the moon around the Earth, this is the Earth, the moon, is at a five degree angle like this, okay? Now, if the orbit of the moon were to be like, actually, even with the ecliptic plane, yes, you would have like more than one, maybe one eclipse per month. But, but since we have the tilt like this, as it goes around, the alignment changes and it doesn't keep in line on the ecliptic plane. I see a crescent moon once a month. Is that also an eclipse? No, a uh, crescent moon is not an eclipse. If you take a look at this model here, it kind of explains uh, or demonstrates what's going on here. Here you have the sun over here, you have the earth here. And what I did is I made eight different uh, moons here to show the different uh, phases of the moon. If you notice, it's always lit on this side. There's a shadow on this side, lit on this side, shadows. There are no shadows made by the earth. All right, this is what makes an eclipse different from what I'm showing here, the phase of the moon. The, the sun's over here on this side. We have the earth over here. That shadow you see that's making the crescent moon is not formed by the earth's shadow. If you take a look at the, up here, this is the new moon. Shadow's on this side and the sun's on this side. We see no moon, they call it the new moon. Over here, you notice the shadow is right in the middle. This is a, a first quarter moon. And once again, the earth is not making that shadow back there. If you come clear around here, let's say to the full moon, the sunlight's hitting it directly. There's nothing there creating the shadow over there. As you go completely around, it's a direct light hitting. One side's illuminated, the other side is a shadow. How come we only see one side of the moon? All right, here's the reason why we see the one side of the moon all the time. The moon is in a synchronized orbit with the Earth, which means as it's going around the Earth, the moon is spinning, rotating, that we always see that side, that one face. We never see the far side as it goes around its journey around the Earth. Thank you, Fred, for the information on eclipses and phases of the moon. Here's something you can try at home. All right, for this activity here, I call Craters of the Moon uh, Lab. You need something like a pizza pan dish, uh, approximately four bags of flour. You could also use cardboard. And then for the objects that are gonna impact the moon, you could use a, a large rock like this, a marble, and a golf ball. Okay, this fun activity I call Creators of the Moon Lab. Uh, you need something like a marble, like I said earlier. This is gonna represent like a, a meteorite. You can use uh, something like this, like a golf ball that could represent like a uh, actual um, comet and something a little bigger like this rock here could represent like an asteroid. And what this experiment is trying to demonstrate is how these craters are formed on the moon. All right, first the, the lunar surface, I use flour. Try to keep it in the pan. I usually use about four uh, bags of this. Just kind of spread it all around. Kind of make it look like uh, the surface of the moon the best you can. Look at that great moon, that lunar scape right there. Isn't that cool? All right. Let's kind of move it a little bit, kind of shuffle around there. See little valleys there, little mountains there. Okay, that's the, the lunar surface. Okay, the second step is get your objects of impact, okay? Uh, I have here a marble that's representing a meteorite, and I have a huge rock here representing like an asteroid. And you want to go from the smallest to biggest so you get a better, bigger impact on the whole thing. You want to hold the rock up about, uh, oh, about shoulder height. 
and then you want to drop it and try to make sure you hit the pan, don't miss the pan. And then watch what happens next. All right, if you come a little closer, you can see the, the different features of a crater. First, you have the basin down here. Uh, sometimes these craters will form a central peak right here. It's kind of like a rebound. And also the walls along here. This is the rim. And then these little lines going out here, are what they call ejector rays. They're coming out on the sides. Okay, for your last rock, get something about this big. It represents an asteroid and watch what happens when it hits the moon. Note the rays, the ejector rays that it makes with this massive rock. I hold it about shoulder length, I let it go. All right, after you're done making the craters of the moon, another neat thing you can do with this is you take this up and it leaves a really cool pattern here. And what's really neat about that, this pattern looks very much like uh, the corona that the sun forms during a total solar eclipse. Thank you, Fred, for the great information on eclipses and the phases of the moon. Make sure you mark your calendars